This island of Ireland on the western edge of Europe has absorbed many invaders since the dawn of history, but she has also sent people out all over the globe who have influenced the course of world events. Ireland today succeeds in combining strong historical traditions with a desire for change and progress. Shortly after this trip, as we sailed her back to Dublin from Dingle, our lovely old boat struck the rocks at Mizzen Head due to an error in navigation and sank to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Thanks to our efficiency rescue services, we all survived. As you know, we Irish, through a long and troubled history, have shown ourselves to be a race of survivors. This is Newgrange, a unique and mysterious structure which stands in the Boyne Valley in County Meath. It is about 5,000 years old. Archaeologists call these structures megalithic passage graves. Nobody knows who the people were who built them or when they arrived in Ireland. As the Egyptian pyramids were being built, these people were burying their dead in massive stone tombs which still stand today silent and enigmatic. Malraux claimed that all art comes from our desire to defy our nothingness. The Stone Age people who built and decorated this lasting monument at Newgrange clearly wished to do so. For me, it has a different kind of importance, however. It proves to me that I belong to a very, very old country. 5,000 years ago here, there was established a civilization, a people who were both skilled, reasonably scientific, a knowledge certainly of farming and engineering, uh, and a people who had such a stable society that they could look forward for a long period ahead, 50, 60, maybe 100 years, and they could make plans to build something that would take them five, 50, 60, 70, 100 years to complete. To me, that gives me a tremendous, satisfactory feeling of, of continuity and permanence. I belong to a race of people that have been on this island for a very, very long time. I have a strong sense of heritage, of what is handed down from one generation to the next. I also have a feeling of continuity, of belonging, and I take pride in the achievements of all the people who have lived on this island since earliest times, whoever they were, Celts, Vikings, Anglo-Normans, and all the others. I believe we can all take pride in this common heritage, and to an extent we do, though like much else to do with nationhood today, this kind of national pride may often be decried. But I am all for it, and I wish we had more of it. It can be the biggest single influence in favor of conservation. People nowadays desperately need a sense of identity, and a nation like a person must relate to its past and identify with it as a source of strength, as well, of course, as looking to the future. This is Connemara, a part of West Galway. It is a Gaeltacht, an area where the people speak Irish as their everyday language. Padraig Pierce loved this place and spent his summers here. His influence on the history of modern Ireland was seminal. Pierce was a Republican. He believed that the efforts of Parnell and others to achieve a permitted measure of home rule through the London Parliament were doomed to failure and that Ireland must achieve complete independence. And he believed in something else as well. He believed in the Gaelic nation, submerged by many waves of conquests, very old, uniquely Irish, with its own modes and forms and attitudes, and above all, its own language, 
and that these were Ireland's special contribution to the rest of the world. Patrick Pearce was an idealist, a visionary, a revolutionary. Such men were dangerous to empires. But he was also a poet, and he wrote his own credo. Oh, wise men riddled me this. What if the dream come true? What if the dream come true? And if millions unborn shall dwell in the house I have built in my heart. Pierce took the first step towards making the dream come true here in O'Connell Street in the capital of Ireland in 1916. This is the main hall of the General Post Office in Dublin. It was in this building that Patrick Pierce, in the year 1916, declared the unity and the independence of the Irish nation. The Republic was proclaimed and its government established. The men who signed that proclamation, Pierce, Connolly, Macdonough and the others, appealed to the ancient concept of Irish nationhood. Today, what is mistakenly called nationalism is often under attack. But for me, the concept of the nation is still the most inspiring and cohesive one in public affairs. appeared to be a failure because the leaders, including Pierce, were executed. But a terrible beauty was born and the Irish nation was re-established. The flag of the modern nation born then still flies proudly here. Pierce wanted Ireland to glory in her past and to derive inspiration for future achievement from it. That was the dream of another great Irishman also. Under Bear Ben Bulban's head, in Drumcliff Churchyard, Yeats is laid. An ancestor was rector there long years ago. A church stands near. Drumcliff is in the centre of Yeats' country. It's very, very old and very, very lovely. And Yeats' presence can be felt everywhere. Sligo was the landscape of the heart for Yeats, but it was in Galway near the Clare border that his friend Lady Gregory had her home, Cool Park. In a poem he wrote prophetically about the destruction of her house, when in the great upheaval surrounding the birth of the new nation, much that was valuable was lost. Here, traveller, scholar, poet, take your stand, when all those rooms and passages are gone when nettles wave upon a shapeless mound and saplings root among the broken stone. O'Casey, Shaw and many others, poets, writers and artists, carve their initials upon this tree in her garden. As Yeats knew, Lady Gregory and the other great figures of the Irish literary renaissance contributed something even more indelible to Ireland. Yeats believed that certain things are permanent, that they are beyond flux and time and change, and so do I. In the National Gallery hang portraits of the leading figures of the Irish renaissance. That was an extraordinary flowering, drawing at least part of its strength from the energies released by the movement for independence. Perhaps all artistic revivals derive to some extent from social resurgence. I don't know so much about other countries, but certainly in modern Ireland, I'm convinced that there is a wish among the majority of our artists to have a much more congenial and harmonious relationship with the rest of the community.